You know, Ivy's case is special because it's the first one we've really used our full 3D technology to help improve her outcomes. So we did an MRI scan with her. We took that data, we sat down at the virtual viewer. Um, we looked at the, her raw data uh, in three dimensions, and then we looked at the STL file I had created from that data in three dimensions. And then we were able to provide uh, the model uh, for which he used to discuss with family um, and do his operative uh, planning. Um, and despite her level of complexity, she had a, had a good outcome. There's no question that having a, an accurate three-dimensional model in your hands is obviously much easier uh, and much better in terms of planning, thinking ahead of what you may encounter in terms of what the inside of the heart looks like and what you may have to do to correct the defect. The 3D lab is a, uh, what I think of as a better way to approach diagnostic imaging for our patients. I think we're very fortunate at Cook Children's uh, to have the uh, resources and the opportunity to actually have a 3D printer uh, inside our hospital, in our department of radiology. Um, this makes it ex very accessible to our surgeons, to our providers, to subspecialists, whether it be cardiology or in the future, neurology or neurosurgery or orthopedics or orthotics. We're all housed here uh, and this is a clinically driven machine. So I think that is a bit unique um, in and of itself. There's not uh, a ton of hospitals that have 3D printers really within the hospital as part of their diagnostic uh, platform. We have a lot of patients in our um, in, the, in the world of congenital heart disease that have very complex relationships. And so we spend a lot of time on those patients using our current modalities to try to understand um, where things are. And then right now we reconstruct those in our head. Um, it's kind of part of how both the cardiologists and the surgeons understand what the problem is and what we need to do about it. When I envisioned doing the 3D lab, I wanted to find a way to um, overcome those barriers. And the fact that you can take uh, information such as an MRI scan or a CT scan and then use that data to create a virtual model, look at that virtual model, make sure that it's everything that you want it to be as far as your understanding of the anatomy, and then to take that and translate it into something that you can print and is tangible both for the surgeon, for the cardiologist, and I think especially for the families, being able for the first time to really understand or comprehend the complexity of their child's heart by seeing the model. And then I think much better understand what Dr. Tam is going to do or Dr. Nikaido or, or, or any one of our surgeons um, to reconstruct the heart or to create baffles. Um, I think uh, improves the understanding and improves an expectation based on the level of complexity and what the potential problems and risks that are involved in their patient's surgery. Less complications, less interventions, less time in the hospital is, is uh, an improvement in healthcare. The printing process can take a variable amount of time depending on how big your model is um, and the complexity of the model. Because trying to draw pictures in two dimensions on a piece of paper for someone like Ivy's heart it's, it's difficult even for a good artist. <laughs> so to try to get someone who doesn't have any understanding of cardiology on top of that, which is most everybody, um, it's difficult. So it was really nice to be able to provide this for her and her family.